This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Volumer back here with another episode of Will, A Wonderful World. Let's continue as we uh, deal with the Tentatives. In the last episode, we also dealt with uh, uh, Lee Min and her situation, um, as, well as, uh, as well as a few other things. Uh, Jimmy and his uh, propensity for doing VR and getting caught with his pants down. <laughs> anyway, let's see if we can figure out how to do this gun form or whatever. Now that I notice that there's an extra choice there, it was like hidden beneath the... Uh, Need the lines there. Oops. Let's see if that does anything. Oh, are we just gonna take the toy gun this time? Well, obviously it affects both of them because the toy gun ain't there. The machine gun slowly stopped, and I heard lots of people yelling outside. I peeked out to take a look. Some men from the gangman group were holding down a pretty buff young woman, pr pressing his head to the ground. Buff young woman? Or, you know, oh, buff young man. So let's say, I ain't nothing wrong with buff young woman, but uh, misread the person's head to the ground. His head was already covered in blood. Cho Yu Han grabbed his hair and pulled it back violently. I finally saw his face. Um, Yo, if I remember correctly, isn't this the new guy in your unit, Lieutenant Kang? What a cute and silly one he is. He came all the way here to save his precious lieutenant without even bringing a gun. Who, uh, who do you think is cuter, him or my son? Wow, got some sexual tension going on? Lieutenant Kang. Fuck you. Kid's nose and mouth are bleeding heavily, and he kept mumbling through the blood. Lieutenant, don't mind me. Cho fired. Uh, Cho fired up the machine gun once again. The kid's fragile flesh was torn to pieces and pounded a stain on the ground. I didn't fucking want to mind you. The fuck you doing here? Didn't you know I was it meant to not fucking tell you about our mission in this goddamn place? You idiot! You didn't even bring a fucking gun. How would you defend your position? How would you defend your precious justice? Justice. What's the fucking point now that you're dead? <laughs> well, apparently it's bad because, you know, uh, on his side, he didn't grab the gun. I looked at the toy gun as if it was mocking me. I tore the pink form into pieces in a rage. The goddamn rules. Were these stupid rules more important than a human life? The custodian was staring at the TV and paid no attention to me. I squeezed the torn piece of paper in my palm and tossed him back onto the desk. Then I stormed out of the army without looking back. I let out a sigh. Er, yeah. I let out a sigh. Fine. Should be okay if I just go without gun, right? Rushed out of the building. Okay. So that's the same as before. Are they going to have a thing about telling me about how I can't move that form yet? Hmm. That's not saying anything, so I don't know. Because this has to be, the, like, from what I understand, this has to, and you can't move it at all. So maybe another, another scene has to be done. Um, let's see what this one gets us. It'll obviously give us a different story, but... Yeah, I'll probably have to do another mission or something like that to lot those options. Because then they say... Well... I never mind. Have, uh, have the lieutenant... Or uh, have it signed by the lieutenant on your, of your unit. I looked down... Or I looked down the green B2 form of my hand. I had an idea. I clutched the form of my hand and ran back to you before I stopped at the lieutenant's desk. I put my hand on the handle of the drawer. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest. This would be a huge mistake. Forging the signature, in all seriousness, this would be crime. Oh, uh, um, okay. Speaking of which, I remember seeing a toy gun on the custodian's desk earlier. Could that be useful? Dot, dot, dot. Something was definitely wrong with me. Unless I find, okay, let's just do the same thing. I'm gonna rush out of the building. Everything should be okay. But no, you're dead, screwed. Game over. You didn't, uh, you didn't, you didn't grow. You didn't learn anything. So the only thing I'm missing from him is his A's, and I don't have the S for them, but the thing is, I'm not allowed to, like, move any of the, uh, any of those... Is there something else that ties into that, though? I'm not really seeing anything that could. At least not that I see, anyway. I guess maybe I should do the next case, and do, or next missions, and see... and see what happens, because... Well, let me look at it one more time, see if I can... if I can do anything about it. Oops. Um. Okay. Reset. Okay, so... Hmm. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I don't really think there's really much I can do. Yeah, I'm gonna just say... I, I'm gonna just say I have to come back later or something like that, because there's really no... Yeah, there's really not much I can do with that. Unless I can somehow uh, uh, mess with the previous mission that gives me the option, because... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing the game 
and skip that one for now. I might have to maybe something else will unlock after playing it. So let's go with Lee Wen's story and Alicia's story and see what uh see what we get. So far yet so close. The simulation exam was only hours away. He had been lying in bed all night, unable to fall asleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I could see the sketch that Mr. Wynn had drawn to me earlier. It was so beautiful. I thought I should go to school early to try and find it in the trash can. You tore it up, dude. I got out of bed, walked across the living room, and grabbed a box of chocolate milk that Rocky had paid me. Or paid me. The room seemed especially crowded tonight. Or moon. I leaned on the railing of the balcony, watching the moon and drinking the milk. Ah, how wholesome. Mr. Wynn's place was to my right. The light was still on. Ever since I had learned that Mr. Wynn lived next door, I'd often involuntarily wander under the balcony to watch the view outside. However, I'd never seen him out here even once. The curtain was always closed behind the glass door to Mr. Wynn's living room. I couldn't see anything inside except to tell whether the lights were on or not. It was almost 1 a.m. The lights were still on. I didn't think they could be up so late, despite his lights usually still being on when I had gone, gone to bed in the past. What was he doing at this hour? It could be because of what happened earlier today. Aren't you feeling a little full of yourself thinking that what you did affected him permanently, or affected him that badly? Uh, it's only been a joke. I suppose I should go and apologize tomorrow. I suddenly heard a muffled sound. Then I noticed his curtain move slightly and saw a, huge, a hand appear at the bottom of the glass door. It was Mr. Wynn's hand. Murder! Shut up, what was I thinking? Immediately called for ambulance while I was knocked on the door, but nobody responded. No one answered the phone in the manager's office either. I heard that people could pass out for many reasons. The best opportunity for first aid only lasted for the first five minutes. It might be too late to wait for the ambulance to arrive. I grabbed a rope on the balcony and tied one end to get around my waist. I tied the other end to the railing. Finally, I climbed up the railing and stood on top of it, shaking. Mr. Wynn's balcony was approximately 1.5 meters away. My own record in the lodge jump was 1.72 meters, if I remember correctly. I should, I should be alright then. One, two, three, jump! Slipper had, uh, slipper had been tossed to the ground earlier. Damn it, I was so close to reaching the pipe on the other side. I was hanging between the third and fourth floors. The rope tightened around my waist. Thankfully, it was strong enough to hold me. I'm still making. I held onto the rope for dear life, carefully untied the knot, and jumped onto the balcony on the third floor. However, no one seemed to be home. It took 20 minutes for the paramedics to get me off the third floor or balcony. By then, it was already too late for Mr. Wynn. I watched helplessly as they carried him out onto the ambulance. He looked like he was only taking a nap. Probably probably uh, carbon monoxide poison or something. I suddenly had the feeling of deja vu of the day I lost my father. No, no! Lee Wynn. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like he, uh, I guess his depression set back in again. Because he did try to kill himself in a previous in a previous story. So it's not like that would have changed at some point, wouldn't it? You know, so... So he probably just kept doing it until, until, because depression's like one of those messed up things where it just can, it can just smack you so hard, you know, and if no one's there or whatever th to help get you back or you're not in the right frame of mind, it can just, just take you over and then boom, that's it, man. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad, really. If someone asked me what I wanted the most at this moment, I would say, FREEDOM! That's for the thing that I wanted second most. I would say, death. Two months ago, a short, skinny old man had bought me from a human trafficking auction house and brought me back to his mansion. Ugh, so she never truly, she thought she got away and she kept getting sucked back in. Man, this girl has the worst luck. I feel so bad. At first, I thought he was just like the other buyers who had only been looking for exotic playthings. But I soon found out that he was much more, much more frightening. Oh, good. His name was Money Jia, an infamous local millionaire in Hong Kong. On the surface, he was the owner of a chemical plant, making his bucks from pharmaceutical research and development. But behind the scenes, he'd be conducting drug tests on humans, and the tests were not just limited to medical drugs, but also experimental ones that were developed solely from the gangs, some of which were even far from, abro from abroad. What he had spent in buying us was nothing compared to the profits he could make off of us. All of his test subjects were people he had purchased from the auction house. None of us had any legal status. Ugh. Therefore, no one would care who we were or where we had gone. It was like we had evaporated from the face of the earth. There were both men and women among us. Sometimes the women might get a little lucky compared to the men. If the girls were willing to become a concubine, they could be spared the fate of trying the more dangerous drugs. Rose had been one of the concubines. She still, she, she had still died though. I heard she had OD'd. No, it kind of reminds me of a, a Pulp Fiction for some reason. After her death, her body was taken away like everyone else before her. She just disappeared without a trace. 
I'd rather die from poison than become another rose. The people had made the same choice as if, as, as I, were locked inside the dungeon. They had tied our hands and feet to the bedpost, with their limbs spread out unnaturally. Ugh. Everyone had been tied down in a separate room. However, the air ducts in the room were all connected. The air was filled with a smell of rotten flesh and death. Every few minutes I could hear horrifying screams come from the distance. I had endured a fever for the last couple of days. I'd heard them say that the drug had been given me was defective, and if my fever didn't come down soon, I would die. Oh, good. To make sure they would extract as much profit out of me as they could, they had to sign a new doctor. He'd been checking up on me every day. This doctor seemed more bookish. He might be a good man. I don't know he's working for this group, it's hard to say. I mean, is it one of those cases he actually knows, or what? Anyway. In my case, I tried to talk to him. He never responded. So I kept talking to myself. After setting up my IV drop, drip, the doctor hung the bottle mess on a makeshift pole that had been made out of a rusty water pipe. Then his phone rang. He walked to the balcony outside and half-closed the door. His medicine kit was near my pillow. There were two bottles of the, in the corner of the kit. One with sleeping pills, one with poison. The doctor was still answering the phone outside. The day had finally come. If I could just grab that bottle, I could carry out the plan I had in my mind for a long time. The rope was loose. I grabbed the pipe firmly. I wiggled my left hand out of the loosened rope and reached for the kit. I grabbed the bottle closer to my left hand, sleeping pills. I twisted the cap off with my left hand and poured the entire bottle into my mouth. Well, uh, downing a bunch of sleeping pills would probably kill you too. Uh, it was so painful. Then I lifted the pipe and smashed it down on my own head. Oh god. I could finally end this life in hell. Carlos, I'm sorry. At least I can't take, any, uh, uh, take care of you anymore. Goodbye forever, Carlos. I didn't know how long it had passed. I was so surprised when I woke up. So I assumed she was going to try to give herself a concussion, and then sleeping pills were supposed to basically just put her in a coma. I had an oxygen mask on my face and IV tubes and turned them out of my arms. Some familiar guards and doctors were standing next to the bed. They had tied my hands and feet to the bedposts. The air was still fresh with that rotten smell. I closed my eyes in desperation. Holy Father, what I have done? Alicia. Ugh. Yeah, tried to kill herself and it failed, and now she's in, in more of a, a shitstorm than before. Man, what's up with all these, like, uh, multiple things having the X's where you can't affect them on one side and they have to be the same one? Well, at least it restricts how many combinations you can get, at least. Oh, and then now we're getting a lot of these, like, uh, blocked out ones in the middle of conversation, so I guess the puzzles are starting to get to that next step, huh? All right, well, let's see what, uh, let's see what shenanigans we can get into, so... Okay, oops. Uh, okay, so we want to, what's okay as is, unlock that one. Okay, she's got seven, and she's only got four. That kind of makes sense with the with with her stuck with, like, a lot of the options there, so we only have so many things we can kind of do anyway. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Well, obviously a lot of these aren't going to be good because of the whole, you know, poison and sleeping pills type of situation going on there. Um, so, so we'll do we'll do kind of like what we usually do before, where we put just all of them on one side and see what that gets us. Yeah, sleeping pills and poison pills. This is gonna be fun on a bun. I wiggled my left hand out. <laughs> wiggle your big toe. I wiggled my left hand out of loose rope and reached the kit. I grabbed the bottle close to my left hand, the poison. I twisted the cap off with my left hand and poured the entire bottle into my mouth. Ugh, it was so painful. Then I lifted the pipe and smashed it down on my head. I could finally end this life in hell. Carlos, I'm sorry. You wish I could take care of you anymore. Goodbye forever, Carlos. Yep, that makes sense. I was so close to reach the pipe on the other side. I was hanging between the third and fourth floors. The rope tightened around my waist. I think was strong enough to hold me. I could still make it. I held on the rope for dear life. Carefully I tied the knot and landed on the balcony railing in the apartment below me. But then my feet happened to slip out of my slippers. Twenty minutes later, the paramedics woke me up in the bushes just outside the first floor. Apparently I had fainted after the fall. I suffered only some mild injuries. But Mr. Wynn... Watch helplessly they carried him on the ambulance. Okay, so this is going to be the same. Um, no, no. Okay, bad endings for both. Of course, that makes sense. So she ends up just pa just getting knocked, her ass getting knocked out. You know, I shouldn't laugh at stuff like this, but, you know. What can you do? Okay, so... Alright. Let's see. Okay, let's retry it again. Okay, let's swap. 
Yeah, you can really only do sleeping pills or poison because you can't really move that, and that can't be moved to the side. So really, you can only do so much with with that combination anyway. So uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let's do this one. That should unlock a few of them. Hopefully the girls will be able to somehow save win the day. Well, of course they're gonna somehow survive or whatever, but it kind of sucks for Alicia. She seems surviving, but she gets get put in the next shitty situation. And don't even talk about what happens to her in between the stories, you know? It's like, man, why her out of all the characters gets the, the, the shit store or the shit cake, you know? Uh, I tried to reach the kit, but the group on my left hand was too tight. Whenever I'd gotten a chance to be alone, I would try to wriggle my wrist loose to loosen up the rope a little. They must have noticed that it got loose after my seizure yesterday. They had tied it up again. Damn it! I ex hadn't expected the opportunity to present itself so soon. I was, I was not prepared. I was such a failure. But they couldn't afford to let this chance go. So I grabbed the pipe, now IV pole, and tried to reach for the balls to sit inside the kit using the hooks on top of it. The IV bottle fell out the hooks and smashed into pieces. The doctor rushed inside and took the pole away from me. He didn't send in the cards, though. Send in the clowns. Those laffy, daffy clowns. He just moved the pole farther away so I couldn't reach it. I put up another bottle of medicine. And he left. I was so close to reaching the pipe on the other side. Before I had a chance to contemplate my next step, the rope snapped. Twenty minutes later, the paramedics woke up on the bushes outside. Okay, she just... Same thing happened. Mild injuries. Mr. Wren, he died. He died, he died, he died. He died. Why, oh why, oh why? Okay. Oh, that's her C rank ending. It's just she just keeps she's stuck in her situation as is. That's lovely. Okay. Anyway, let's keep working on this. So, uh, oops. No, I can't reset. That's fine. Okay. So, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's try just leaving everything over there. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember which one of those I did. Yeah, I guess I don't think those kids are on matters, but what over there? I would uh, reach for the kit. Uh, oh, uh, it was all the size of half my palm. I needed to hide it somewhere. The doctor came back from his phone call. I was still lying in the bed, all spread out, with my eyes closed. But when he checked my forehead, I winced. Seeing my strange reaction, he carefully examined his med medicine kit again and noticed the balsam missing. There was another furniture in the room of the bed that I was lying in. Soon he found the bottle under my pillow. Once he'd held the bottle back, he didn't seem to be interested in giving me a hard time for it. It was as if nothing had happened. It's probably one of those things where he's probably in his own situation, so he's like, I understand you're trying to get out, but I'll get killed if something happens, so I'm not going to do anything, but, you know. My life in hell continued. It's as if nothing happened. My life in hell continued. The wind was strong that night. I held onto the pipe and climbed up to Mr. Wind's balcony. Mr. Wind had fallen to the ground in his living room. He could barely feel his pulse and he wasn't breathing. I immediately ran through everything I had learned about CPR in my head. I had put both my hands together, placed them upon his chest, and began pressing. One, two, three. I used so much strength as I could with every press, I just hoped that it wasn't too weak to save his life. After three presses, Mr. Wind showed no signs of waking up. He's still not breathing. You gotta give him the mouth to mouth at this point. Oh, man. The games I have, man. I lifted his chin up and started doing mouth to mouth into him. Two sets of mouth to mouth, followed by three pressing in the chest. I started repeating this routine. I think that's right. It's been forever since I've gone to, uh, had a CPR test, but I believe that's how you're supposed to do it. I think it's, although three presses seems a bit much, I, I could swear it's more like, like 10 or something like that, or, or t like, I, I feel like 30 is way too much. I thought it was like five. It's like five mouth to mouth, five again, or something like that. Well, don't, don't, I mean, don't quote me on that. I'm just saying, I, I don't remember being 30. Mr. Wentz's forehead was covered in tiny drops of sweat. His hair, his wet hair was stuck to the corner of his eyes. Why won't you wake up? Why won't you wake up, Mr. Anderson? The time kept passing. It had been over five minutes. But I wouldn't stop. At that point, he might have brain damage if he hasn't woken up by then, because at some point you have to, because I know it, it's like, I forgot, it's not CPR, it's like, Kind of like the electroshock treatment that they use to compression or whatever it is to jump start your heart. Like in movies and TV shows, they sh they show that always working or somehow they get back to life after that. Like, but I heard realistically, there's it like only happens like five percent of the time does that actually work. Usually, most people are past that point of no return. But anyway, sorry about that. Hope was like uh, hope was like a flickering light on a single candle. I couldn't tell when it would suddenly go out. My tears and sweat were mixing together and falling on Mr. Wynn's shirt. Drop after drop, making it wet. 
Shouldn't it wet be spaced? Whatever. A rough hand grabbed my wrist. Mr. Wren's eyes slowly opened. I didn't know why I cried. I must have looked horrible with my ugly crying face. You're an anime drawn girl. So you can't have an ugly face. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. That's the problem with that type of art meme. It's hard to make an ugly face unless you truly try. Like, and you have to, but you're not doing the same anime style at that point. A few minutes later, the paramedics finally arrived. I asked what kind of first aid to give him. I suddenly realized why I had just done it. I couldn't get a word out. I just did that with Mr. Wren with our mouth, didn't I? Really? I mean, it's mouth to mouth. You're saving his life. I don't think no one cares about whatever. I just wants to take Mr. Wren away. The paramedics told me to bring some necessities for his hospital stay. I finally calmed down, and for the first time, I had the chance to look around Mr. Wren's apartment. There were all sorts of paintings hanging on the walls. All, a small side seaside town glowing in the sunset. Glowing wheat fields stretching endlessly, a rainbow crossing a valley through t rosy clouds out after the rain. They were all masterpieces. Weirdly, though, according to the signature, most of them were from over ten years ago. A portrait of a woman attracted my attention. The woman seemed to be in her early twenties, her long black hair spreading out on a soft white pillow. Her sleeping face was mesmerizing, even to me. Was she Mr. Wynn's wife? Colonel Milwaukee had asked whether Mr. Wynn had a girlfriend on his first day. He didn't answer the question. But why was he living alone then? Right, right, I should be collecting necessities for Mr. Wynn. Speaking of which, what did one need for hospital stay anyway? Pajamas, underwear, toothbrush, toothpaste, towel, slippers, razor, face face wash, napkins, and porn. No, I, I, that's what Jimmy wants. I scoured the kitchen and the bathroom thoroughly. The only door left had to be the door to the bath bedroom. I should be able to find a change of clothes in it. I pushed the door open. To my surprise, what was behind the door looked exactly what had often appeared in my dreams. It was a graveyard. A graveyard of paintings. Torn apart. Painted over. Pieces so small they were completely unrecognizable. The remains of various paintings nearly completely filled the room. In the corner of the room, some blankets lay on the floor, with some clothes folded on top of them. Was this where Mr. Wynn usually spent the night? The room made me feel nothing but sadness and utter despair. They were so much alike of Mr. Wynn and me. Sounds like he has a bad... He's having a bad time because of the death... I mean, it's probably because of the death of his wife. I mean, he probably was already depressed already because most artists... Or most arti artists, artists and scientists, like intellectuals or creative people tend to weirdly have... Their brain chemistry is so weird that they can... They can do and do these, like, genius or inspirational things, but because of the way their brains are made up, they tend to be more prone to depression and certain acts that, uh, that the brain... You know, uh, tends to react to it. It's interesting how that, how it is. I don't know all the correlation. I just know that it tends to be a common, common case. But uh, okay, let's uh, finish her. So we need three more of her. So I assume it's probably like a. Does she have multiple A's or multiple S's? No, probably because you can't get an X after that point. So okay. Well, anyway, now that we've got her S, we don't have to worry about, worry about that one girl's S at this point. So okay. Obviously, we'll just leave that as is because we can only really fight the bottom anyway. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's just do at this point. Well, actually, do we? Oh wait, we can't put it there anyway, right? Because it has to be yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, that one should get us something. At that point, since yeah, at that point we can only switch it so many times. So now it's doing one by one and see what happens. Um, I tried to reach for the kit, but the rope on my left hand was too tight. Whenever I got a chance to be alone, I would try to look at my wrist loose to loosen the rope up a bit. Uh, uh, we already said that before. Uh, I was not prepared. It was such a failure. Uh, so, uh, the doctor came back from the phone call. I was lying on the bed, so sprayed out with my eyes closed, fumbling, mumbling quietly to myself. At this point, she didn't get out of the bottle. Just as he had left me, he felt my forehead with his hand, fiddled with the IV a bit, closed his kit, and left. I opened my eyes and I heard the door close, and I went. So the A rank is her just not even getting the thing in the first place. Okay. The, the way they rate these is just weird. Uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's try that. adding that one, see if that gets us anything. And then we'll have one more after that. Um, reach for the kit. Okay. I really put my left hand into the loosened rope and reach the kit. I grab the bottle and closer to my left hand. The sleeping pills. Uh, let's hide it somewhere. Oh, I saw the slipper that I dropped yesterday when I was having a seizure. It was close enough for me to reach it. The doctor came back in from his phone call. I was still lying in the bed, all spread out, my eyes closed, and quietly to myself. Just as he had left me, he 
He felt my forehead with his hand, fiddled that IV a bit, and closed his kit and left. I opened my eyes when I heard the closed door close. The bottle of sleeping pills was still safely hidden inside the slipper. I know that as long as I do my best, my dreams will come true. So she, in this case, she got the uh, pills, so... Alright, let's try it one more time. And, uh... Swap out... I assume I just have to probably swap... Swap it out. So in one one story, she gets the sleeping pills. She saves the sleeping pills, while the other one, she saves the poison bottle. So that's interesting. So we'll see how that works. Um, it's probably going to be the same until she grabs the poison. And then he hides somewhere. I saw the slipper. It's probably the same thing. It's just going to happen. It's just poison instead of the sleeping pills. So. Um, yeah, it looks like it's the same story. You have pins on the slipper. Um, okay. Her dream will come true of either poisoning someone or, or saving someone. It's hard to say. But... Alright, we got both of those, right? Alright, cool. Back out of that. We got new posts? Yep. Alright, cool. Oh, wow. Multiple letters. <laughs> Taste of the early summer. Okay. Best oh, one armed man. The Fury of the cat. Did you just say nya 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 nya? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll still have to go back to that at some point. But I have to figure out how to unlock the extra features on it, so. Alright. Well, let's, uh, I guess let's stick, just stick with her for now. And, uh, and the taste of early summer, since, I mean, we're close to each other anyway, as is, so. Why not, right? Okay. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at something on my my computer time, just seeing how much time I'd left. So, to Sunday afterwards, the sun was warm and the smell of the flowers was dancing in the early summer wind. I was standing in front of the ex exhibition center, waiting nervously. A few days ago, Mr. Wynn had fainted in his apartment due to exhaustion. Fortunately, I had found him in time. Otherwise, the consequences would have been incon inconceivable. I do not believe you know what uh, that word you think it means. He had given me a ticket to the art exhibition today as a thank you. I had been so excited when I got the ticket that I forgot to ask if it was the only ticket he had. Or would he be coming too? Is this going to be one of those type of stories where Jimmy's like into this girl, but this girl ends up like falling for the, the older, mature man? Maybe. We'll see. It could be one of those where they just become good friends. It's hard to tell until you get further on. Anyway. It also happened to be my birthday. I had not celebrated my birthday in years. Leave it leave it to the boy who has the crush on the girl to really not go for it, like in terms of like trying to get closer to her, just only by Well, I mean he does, but it's like he's not doing enough, but she's having more interaction with Mr. Wynn than Jimmy. I specifically put my favorite dress before I left my apartment. Um yeah, I don't really celebrate my birthday much either. As a matter of fact, I had never heard of the exhibitionist artist. To be prepared, I had visited or visited dozens of bookstores just to find a book on, of this of his collection. Even as late as last night, I'd been looking up his online work online. I hadn't gone to bed until it was almost daytime. I had set seven uh, seven alarms just to make sure that I wouldn't oversleep. Seven alarms, what like on your phone, the the clock. Oh, anyway, at one p.m., the show was, had officially started. The line was getting shorter, but I still hadn't seen Mr. Wynn. I took out my phone and hesitated, wondering whether or not to text him. Eventually, I decided not to. Another hour had passed. I couldn't stop myself anymore. I sent him a text. The art, the, art, the art show today is really cool. Thank you so much for the ticket, Mr. Wynn. I'm in the gift shop near that north entrance. Right now, we have a lot of cute little things here. Are you coming today, Mr. Wynn? Another hour er, Another hour passed. It started to drizzle. I sent him a text. It's raining. Remember to bring an umbrella with you if you're heading out, Mr. Wynn. I wanted to do the entrance, but I didn't want to walk too far away. Another hour had passed. There's a book signing at the West Entrance right now. I just bought an art collection book. I think it's going to be sold out soon. Mr. Wynn, would you like me to buy you a copy? Another hour passed. Mr. Wynn, I'm about to head back. Thank you again. I waited until 5 o'clock. He never showed up. Perhaps he had only one ticket in the first place. It's my fault for assuming too much. The rain had turned from drizzle to downpour. I walked home alone without a room. I couldn't tell if it was because of the rain, but I cried. He went. Just because the one guy wasn't giving you the time of the day, he probably ended up killing himself again. No, sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't even joke about shit like that, you know. Just with the theme of the game and how Mr. Wynn's depressive, who knows? He probably had a bout of depression, you know. Huh. I don't think there are any obvious leads by reading his letter. In this story, how does the difference between the west entrance and the north entrance have an impact on the result? 
Try to ignore this letter alone. You're right. We are unable to tell how this will impact the Indians yet. But I would still encourage you to give it a try by switching their position. Maybe then you'll see the effects of the new ending. Sometimes you won't know for sure without trying. Do or do not. There is no try. So you mean that the clues might not be in the original letters, but they might also be hidden inside the other endings that we unlock? That's exactly right. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, this is indicating that different endings will... Is this at the point where we can now start choosing what endings we actually want to keep? Because before it wasn't really... If it was if it was an S ending, it stuck with it. It wouldn't really let me change it if I had unlocked both S endings. So maybe we'll eventually now at the point get to swap out endings to get the other variations, probably. But anyway. Okay, let's reset. Set it as is. And then we'll get whatever endings we can. For now, anyway. Oh, actually, it's kind of time's already up so all right well we'll figure this out in the next episode of will a wonderful world will the lady be able to will be able to change history so she and mr wynn can have some uh a, i don't know fun in the art exhibit a date i don't know maybe just father daughter actually this might be more of a father daughter type of story than anything but we'll find out so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time